Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 30, and I'm going to discuss radiation pressure. There are many videos previous to this which are relevant, and I've listed most of them on the left-hand side of your screen. The most important of which is number 26, where I discussed the electrostatic boundary conditions. So in video number 26, we're able to summarize the electrostatic boundary conditions with the following equation, and it's written on the left -hand side of your, top left-hand side of your screen. So here what we said was that the difference between the electric field above your, your uh, interface and the electric field below your interface was an amount sigma over epsilon zero. And we incorporated this normal unit vector in order to take into account the tangential component also. So we know that the perpendicular component of your electric field is discontinuous by an amount sigma over epsilon zero, where the tangential component is in fact continuous. So we know, for example, at the moment that the electric field inside of a conductor is zero, but that the electric field outside of a conductor is non-zero, and that it is perpendicular to the conductor as it, we'll say, as it leaves, or as it begins, I suppose, at the surface of the conductor. So if we see here, let's say this circular blob is our conductor, that means the electric field inside it, or the downside of our electric field, is zero, but the above or up side of our electric field is non-zero. What this means is that the electric field outside is equal to sigma over epsilon zero n hat. Now we also know that the electric field is equal to minus the gradient of the electric potential. And this means that the, the surface charge is equal to minus epsilon zero del V del n. So we know that the electric force, capital F, is equal to the charge multiplied by the electric field. If we divide across by unit area, we we'll get the force per unit area, which is of course a pressure. And I'm going to give it the placeholder small f rather than p for the moment. So we know that f is equal to q times e. But the surface charge is going to be equal to sigma times the area. So we get that the force is equal to sigma times a times e or that the force per unit area is equal to sigma times e. Now the question is this. If we're to work out, we're trying to work out what the pressure is due to the electric field, or what the, the pressure caused on the conductor due to the electric field, which value, or which electric field, should we in fact use? So the answer to this is we use the average electric field, which I'll show you now. So just going back to video number 14, where I discussed the electric field of an infinite plane, we found that the electric field was equal to sigma over twice epsilon zero n hat. So let's consider a small patch of a conductor. So the larger of the two rectangles on the left hand side in orange is our conductor. And we're going to consider a small patch of our conductor. So we know that the electric field above our conductor uh, and we'll say due to the patch is going to be one half sigma over epsilon zero. And we know that the electric field of our conductor due to the patch underneath the conductor, we'll say, is one half sigma over epsilon zero. And to account for all other fields, we said that in purple we have the other electric fields penetrating the, the patch in some manner. And I've drawn as well, just for completeness, the unit normal here. So notice, of course, that the surface charge density is sigma as well. What this means is that the total electric field is the electric field due to the patch, or the charges in the patch, plus the electric field due to other sources. So if we look at the electric field above the patch, it's going to be sigma over twice epsilon zero plus other electric fields. And if you look at the electric field below the conductor, it's going to be the electric field of the patch, which is going to be minus sigma over twice epsilon zero plus the other electric fields. You might ask yourself, why is it minus but well, that's because it, we're, we must incorporate this n hat. So I'm going to say that above the conductor is positive, where below the conductor is in fact negative. This means that if we add the two of these, or I suppose you could solve it simultaneously if you like, we're going to get that the total other field is one half of the field above the conductor plus the field below the conductor, which of course is the average field. So for our conductor, or for any conductor I suppose in this case, I'm just going back here, so for this particular conductor, it's going to be, it's a large body, it's quite solid. It's not infinitesimally thin. So for this reason, 
the electric field below or the electric field down as I'm calling it here is zero. What this means is that the other electric field is sigma over twice epsilon zero n hat. So why is this of interest to us? It means that if we look at the force per unit area, which is the pressure, it is the pressure on a conductor due to an electric field. We saw already that it is equal to sigma times the electric fields. Sigma is the surface charge. We have already found that the electric field is the average electric field of an amount sigma over twice epsilon zero n hat. What this means is that the force per unit area on a conductor due to an applied electric field is sigma squared over twice epsilon zero n hat. What this means is that a conductor is attracted into a field. Now this might sound very, um, not very intuitive. It might also perhaps appear to be, you know, not very useful. Where, why would, where, where would it be in a situation that an electric field would apply a pressure onto things? We know, for example, when dealing with, uh, we'll say, astronomy, that radiation pressure is a very important um, physical phenomenon which people must take into account. So it's definitely not something pie in the sky. So if you're into astronomy or astrophysics or anything like that, radiation pressure is something you'll definitely see or perhaps even have heard of. So that's all I've got to say about, about this. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.